but I can't sleep. Knocks and I'm a boogie, said a cotton sheet. Made a dollar a day. Thousand happy lives, nothing else to say. The photogenic feast. I'm on the finger in the feed the beast. The sheep. There's ever present trouble, but you can't be beat. The package is in a pot. The ring and every cover for a country mom. Raise you for your bake. Throw your back and give me catch a break. Snack. Don't worry where you're going, you ain't coming back. A gram a dollar a day. Grand's all in a circle, take it out that way. The square that shines so bright. We're all in this together, gonna be alright.
on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of W. MNH. Disney's Cafe is the place to put a smile on your face. Judy and the crew will take care of you, bring your appetite, and treat your taste buds right. Disney's Cafe is always a winning choice. Breakfast, lunch, or supper. Disney's Cafe at 860 Elm Street in downtown Manchester. Dine in, take out, or make a reservation. Call 603-606-2532. Eat, drink, and be happy. Diz's Cafe. When it comes to keeping WMNH on the air and your own personal or business computer needs, trust Groland Computers. Located on Elm Street in Manchester, Groland handles computer repair, virus removal, and custom-built systems. Are you looking for budget-friendly options? Check out our selection of fully inspected used computers. We offer tailored, on-site solutions. No unnecessary expenses here. Visit Groland.com or call Groland Computers at 603-645-0101. Your tech, your way. Trust Grolin Computers. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at CGIBusinessSolutions.com. Welcome back, everybody. It's Matt Connerton Unleashed. We got a packed third hour for you. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, we have Eric Pilcher's classic film review. And this week, the subject is uh, Steven Spielberg's 1993 classic, his masterpiece, Schindler's List. And then we've got a band coming in all the way from Connecticut. They've got a big show coming up in Nashua tonight, so they're going to stop in here when the deadbolt breaks. But first, a surprise. This was not advertised, but uh, DJ Reckless, what are we about to hear? We're about to hear world premiere of one of my first tracks that's coming out with jay mason and a few other friends okay but yeah no this song's called way to the world uh we wrote it it was me sean white and who i dj with we produced it uh jay mason was the top line he was the singer on it um i wrote the lyrics part of them it was during a time where like i was just going i just was going through a really bad breakup yeah and there was a lot of things with nightlife. I just got college night going and everything. I was like, that's what my, my anxiety was at all time high. And this was like, I felt weighed down. Yeah. A lot of stuff. So we put it in a song basically. And Hence the title, uh, weight of the world. Yeah. All right. So this is uh DJ reckless with uh, Jay Mason and who else? Sean White and Sean White. All right. Check it out. The world radio premiere. Twist up, 
let it go Dialing myself with the chemicals Another long night with my thoughts alone I'm trying my best but I'm a hoarder Gotta find a way to make some space I know about the extra food and clothes you give them paid for out of your own pocket. If we make a combined approach, we could get more than 4,000 out, mine and yours. Oscar. We could relocate them in something like safety in Moravia. I don't know. How many cigarettes have you smoked tonight? Too many. For every one <coughs> you smoke, I smoke half. I've done all I can. I will not accept that. No, Oscar, I can't do anything. I anymore. will not accept that. No. Give or take. Give or take what, Stern? Give or take what? Count them. How many?
That's it. You can finish that page. What did Gert say about this? He just told him how many people you needed and you're not buying them. You're buying them, you're buying it for each of these names. If you were still working for me, I'd expect you to talk me out of it. It's costing me a fortune. Finish the page and leave one space at the bottom. Historical dramas have a mixed history in Hollywood. In some cases, they have been criticized to the point where they have been ostracized from film lore, or controversies have diminished their staying power. Then there are exceptions. These films leave an undeniable impact that time cannot diminish the message and power they carry. This week's film is one of those, and it is as important now as it was the 30-plus years ago it was released. Based off the novel Schindler's Ark by Thomas Keneally, released in 1993 and directed by Steven Spielberg, Schindler's List tells the story of German Nazi industrialist Oskar Schindler, who decides to use his wealth and power to save over a thousand Polish Jews from concentration camps by bribing Nazi officers, in particular the cold and callous Nazi general Amon Geth, played by Ralph Fiennes. Rounding out the starring cast is Sir Ben Kingsley and M. Beth Davids. Spielberg was initially reluctant to take on the project. He passed it on to several other directors because he felt he was not mature enough to do the film. This includes Roman Polanski, Martin Scorsese, Sidney Pollack, among others. Spielberg finally agreed to direct the film when Holocaust denial really began to gain traction in the world, especially here in the United States. The next clip is from the Today Show in 2018, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the release of the film. In this clip, Spielberg talks about the difficulties of making the film and his decision to film the movie in black and white in the fight that followed. I don't think I'll ever do something, anything as you know, as important in my to, to my life uh, as as the way the, the way this film affected personally affected me and my family. And so this for me is you know uh, something that I will always be proudest of. I looked back at an interview you had done about the time of the release of this film, and you said something to the effect you didn't expect it to be a hit. Was that was that the case? Yeah, that was very accurate. I didn't. Uh, I couldn't imagine, based on the story that we told that an audience would tolerate the just just the amount of, of, of violence, you know, human against human, or, or inhuman against human. Schindler's List was in fact a hit, the winner of seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director. But Spielberg says the now famous movie could have looked very different if studio executives had their way. I was the only one that wanted to shoot the picture in black and white. No, but the studio didn't. They didn't think they could sell like a set if it was in black and white. And at one point that they were negotiating with me, they said, shoot it in color, we'll release the film in black and white, but then we'll release the cassette in color. And I said, no, this is, I don't know the Holocaust in color. I wasn't around then, but I've seen documentaries on the Holocaust. And anybody who's seen any documentaries, they're all shot in black and white. I, I can't imagine what it was like to shoot this film. You're in, you're in Krakow, you're in some of the places where this actually happened. I know there's, there's cameras around and, and all the trappings of movie, but the scenes had to have taken a personal toll on you, your crew, your cast. Yeah, it, well, I think everybody felt that we were uh, memorializing something. And it felt to all of us as if we were shooting in a cemetery. So there was a kind of amazing 
um, a, a equanimity of respect and it was quiet on the set and everybody just did their work. No one was laughing, no one was telling jokes. Now, 25 years later, the film is still teaching new lessons. Individual hate is a terrible thing, but when collective hate organizes and gets industrialized, then genocide follows. And we have to take it more seriously today than I think we have had to take it in, in a generation. And now we're in an era that you know, anti-Semitism is on the rise. Xenophobia. We, 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 we all know what racism hap happened in Pittsburgh. Is this an important time to re-release this film? I think this is maybe the most important time to re-release this film. Possibly now is even a more important time to re-release Schindler's List than 1993, uh, 94, when it was initially released. This film is quite powerful in its approach, both in filming and performances. This includes the game of mental chess being played by Gath and Schindler. Both men are shrewd and keen to outsmarting people. However, Schindler is compassionate and wants to use his wealth and intelligence to save the Jews from peril. Whereas Gath is a sociopathic, cold-blooded killer with no emotion or remorse. The next two clips show this. First, while building a stockade at a concentration camp, a Jewish woman, who is a contractor, tries to persuade Gath to stop construction because the foundation is bad. His ruthless means of dealing with her show the callous nature of the man. Then Schindler speaks with Helen Hirsch, a woman Geth has selected from a concentration camp to become his maid, whom he becomes smitten with, and due to this begins to abuse her both verbally and psychologically. Here, Schindler explained with great compassion why she is safe while showing care for her plight. Yes, they are, sir. One of you is a very lucky girl. There is a, an opening for a job away from all this backbreaking work at the, my new villa. Uh, which of you has um, a domestic experience? Yeah, on second thoughts, I don't really want someone else's maid. All those annoying habits I have to undo. I don't want to give you my call. Uh, what's your name? Helen Hughes. What? Helen Hughes. What? I can't hear. Helen Hughes. Yeah. The entire foundation has to be torn down and repoured. If not, there will be at least a subsidence at the southern end of the barracks. Subsidence and then collapse. You are an engineer? Yes. My name is Diana Reiter. I'm a graduate of civil engineering from the University of Milan. Oh, I'm educated too, like Karl Marx himself. Unter Schaffjörer. Jawohl. Shoot her. Herr Kommandant, I'm only trying to do my job. Yeah, I'm doing mine. Sir, she's foreman of construction. We're not going to have arguments with these people. Okay. Oh, shoot her. Here, on my authority. It will take more than that. I'm sure you're right. And now, Schindler and Hirsch. I said to him, I, I don't know how I say this. I never could say it now. I said to him, why are you beating me? He said, the reason I beat you now is because you ask why I beat you. I know your sufferings, Helen. 
It doesn't matter. I have accepted them. Accepted them? One day, he will shoot me. No, 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 no. He won't shoot you. I know. I see things. We were on the roof on Monday. Young Alicia and I, and we saw the Herr Commandant come out of the front door and, and down the steps by the patio, right there below us. And, and there on the steps, he drew his gun and he shot a woman who was passing by. A woman carrying a bundle through the throat, just, just, just a woman on her way somewhere. You know, she, she was no fatter or thinner or slower or faster than anyone else, and I couldn't guess what had she done. The more you see of the Herr Commandant, the more you see there is no set rules that you can live by. You can say to yourself, if I follow these rules, I will be safe. He won't shoot you because he enjoys you too much. He enjoys you so much he won't even let you wear the star. He doesn't want anyone else to know it's a Jew he's enjoying. He shot the woman from the steps because she meant nothing to him. She was one of a series, neither offending or pleasing him. But you, Helen, it's all right. It's not that kind of a kiss. Thank you. Yeah. Right, the wine. As the war ends, Schindler is bankrupt due to massive bribes he had to do to keep his workers and the Polish Jews safe from dire circumstances at concentration camps. In our final clip, as Schindler plans to flee due to being wanted for war crimes as a card-carrying Nazi, the people he saved give him a ring. As Schindler cries at those he couldn't save, he is reminded of those he did. We've written a letter trying to explain things in case you were captured. Every worker has signed it. is well deserving of every great review, award, and lasting impact it has received, and then some. And honestly, that could not even do this film justice. There could be multiple reviews on this program with powerful scenes talking about the symbolism in the film with candles, and yes, the little girl in the red jacket, and the effort all that were involved in had to put forth. It is a film that everyone must see once in their lives. To understand that to do right, no matter how small you think the impact might be, 
can have the greatest lasting ramifications. I hope you join me next week when we begin our month-long tribute to Orson Welles with a special look at the fight he went through to make his seminal film, and in my opinion, the greatest film ever made, Citizen Kane. And then in two weeks, we will actually review Citizen Kane as it is my favorite film of all time. For WMNH and Matt Connerton Unleashed, this has been a classic film review with Eric Pilcher. That is called Not to Touch the Earth. The band is When the Deadbolt Breaks. And I think we have uh, on the phone with us Aaron from When the Deadbolt Breaks. Aaron, are you there? Yeah, hey, how you doing? Good, good. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the program. I was hoping to have you here in studio, but obviously the weather has been uh, a challenge for 
for people. I thought we were just getting rain, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was pretty brutal. It's actually, um, and we've got everybody here. It's uh, Steve, Amber, myself, and uh, Rob is going to be coming up in a second here. So, Oh, very good, very good. Now, uh, so you guys are from Connecticut, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, whereabouts in Connecticut? Uh, kind of all spread out throughout the throughout the state. So uh, some of us are through the eastern part, some of us are through the other side. So um, all around Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, I was just Small curious. Area. I was cu- yeah, that's true. It is. Yeah, I was born in Hartford. That's why I was curious. But uh, yeah, a lot of great bands. Okay. A lot of great bands come out of that area. Um, what uh, I love that track, by the way, "Not to Touch the Earth." That is really, really good. Um, how do you, for people who haven't heard uh, "When the Dead Bolt Breaks," how do you how do you describe your music? What I, everyone always hates this question, but just for the for the sake of it, like how do you categorize what you do? Yeah, well, we for years we've gotten thrown into the doom category, but I don't know if I've ever really seen us as a doom band. Um, it's more like a psychedel- psychedelic, heavy, experimental metal, I guess. Yeah. Um, we do a little bit of everything from you know, grind parts to sludgy doom parts to quiet Pink Floyd stuff. And it's kind of all over the gamut, you know, so it's just kind of hard to pigeonhole into one doom category, you know? Right, right. Totally. Um, who does the, the vocals? Is that you? Yeah, that's me. You know, we actually just added Amber to the band this year, uh, actually last year. So uh, we're splitting a lot of vocals. She's been on a couple of the records before. Okay. Okay. Um, particularly curious about the vocals because I also, I don't know if you've ever heard this before. If anyone's ever said this to you, maybe, but I also hear a little bit of the doors in there. And I think it's because of the vocals. The vocals actually remind me a little bit of Jim Morrison. I take that as a huge compliment. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Something about the delivery. So you haven't heard that before or no? No, I I've gotten, um, I've actually gotten typo negative, which always kind of threw me for a bit of a loop. (laughs) I can hear that too. I, yeah, I think um, you got a little Peter Steele going there. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up, I'm a huge fan of, you know, the Animals, the Doors, you know, a lot of the, the 70s, and, and even, the you know, a lot of the crooner style, David Bowie. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of where that whole thing kind of came from. We actually did two Doors covers. He, he actually just played one of them, yeah. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what Doors covers? So we did uh, Not to Touch the Earth. And then um, we also did um, My Wild Love. My Wild Love, which was on one of our... Um, it's an EP, but we did some kind of interesting techno remixes of some of our stuff on that one. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, w- it's called, I want to hear that. It's huh. called the Nightmare Versions, where, where uh, Steve, actually, before he was in the band, had taken some of our stuff and um, kind of remixed them as if it was it basically sounds like Godflesh redid some of our songs. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so we um, ended up throwing on the cover of Not of a. Uh, of uh, my wild love on there, which is kind of an interesting version of it. So yeah, yeah. Um, where does the name come from? By the way, I love the name. When the deadbolt breaks is a great name. Probably a whole lot of LSD, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, wait, not, not that I'm promoting that, but when I was younger, I, I did you know a lot. Um, and it was a period of time where I was having this reoccurring dream or vision kind of thing where. Uh, of just this cartoon scene of like this guy on this doorstep, it's raining, he's got flowers in one hand and, you know, a smoking barrel of a gun in another. And on the other side of the door, the door's kicked open and you just see the feet of somebody laying there. So I always thought kind of when the deadbolt breaks, it's like, what happens? We don't know, you know? So that's kind of where it came from. Yeah. No, <laughs> no I... one knows who they were <laughs> or <laughs> where they were going. I mean, I envy us. I do. I do. Oh, I, I love a good Spinal Tap reference. That's good. <laughs> uh, um, now, uh, how long have you guys been around? The band in general has been around for about 15 years. Wow. Um, we've had a lot of lineup changes over the years because it was never really about the band. It was more about the music and whoever could bring whatever to the music, you know. So um, each one of our records has, sometimes a different lineup and you know, always has different people involved with it doing vocals or, you know, um, certain songs where they added something to it, you know? So, but this lineup here, um, two years, about two years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. I'm looking at your band camp and you've had a lot of releases over the years. So makes sense that you've been around a long time. 
Um, yeah, we're working on our 10th record now. Wow. Wow. Now, where do you record? We, we've actually done everything ourselves um, ever since the beginning, actually. And it works out good now because I have my own studio. Rob's got his own studio and Steve has his. Yeah. So we kind of do pieces of it at different spots depending on what we want to try and accomplish. So, yeah, um, I yeah often, we're, we're all self-sufficient. So. I often say it's amazing that, you know, we live in a time where you can really do that. There's so many different ways that you can record music and, you know, you can you can be working in different studios and email tracks back and forth. There's so much you can do now that, you know, you really couldn't do. Like when I was growing up, you, you, you know, it was uh, you, you go to a studio and and you do everything there. And, and now you've got a lot of options. Um, has the process, I assume the process has changed over the years though, right? Going back 15 years. Yeah. I mean, the first record, um, it, it was a weird process. I mean, we, we ended up getting signed on that record even before it was, it was called, uh, um, in the ruins, no light shall shine. So I had just left cable, which was, you know, at the time we were touring, I was touring with them for about a couple of years. And when I left, I had this idea of doing something really heavy and slow and just disgusting. And, and a drummer and I started putting it together. Um, and we got an offer like halfway through the process before we even had a band put together. Um, so we took the offer, rushed, kind of put the band together and then that was it. So after that, we ended up doing a lot of, um, we'd get together for like a weekend, drink a ton of wine and just write and record simultaneously. Whatever happens is what we kept, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a little more pro, you know, a little more streamlined now, but um, still a unique process, you know. Yeah. Um, what are your live shows like, by the way? And because I have not seen you live, but I, it, it seems like your music would lend itself to to some degree of theatrics, or maybe not. Maybe you just maybe you you just show up and play. I don't know. What what is the live show like for you guys? Loud and abrasive. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Aaron loves doing projections, so we have some visuals to go along with it. Um, not a whole lot of talking, but also not a whole lot of silence. So yeah. in between songs, there's always some kind of noise going on. Yeah. And uh, we, I don't want to say we go out of our way to hurt people, <laughs> but sometimes it happens. <laughs> so it, we, we try to make it more... I always wanted it to be more of an experience than a rock show, right? So um, from the second we start playing to the second we end, there's no breaks really, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a it's a constant wall of noise, wall of sound, you know? And sometimes it's a little bit of feedback or it depends on kind of what song we're coming from and going into. Mm -hmm. And the projections, it's uh, about an hour and a half that, I, that I've put together over the years of different images and different um videos that we've actually done for the band um some parts of the movie begotten uh so it's a little bit of everything but it's just there's a lot of dark scenery a lot of flashes that um kind of goes along with the music not fit for those with visual epilepsy right right <laughs> <laughs> understood understood or a sensitive stomach, or a sensitive stomach. <laughs> now obviously with the band spanning over 15 years, does earlier material still show up in the set list or, or do you tend to do more recent stuff? Yeah. Um, it does show up actually. The, the set we have now is kind of set up. We're it actually spanning some of the career. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's that's cool. A little different though. Um, you know, it's never quite like the record, particularly with the lineup changes, you know, it'd almost be impossible for me to play like, you know, the past basis. So we try to just work within whatever we've got at the time and just let it go. Yeah. Um, very cool. Now, have you guys played New Hampshire before? You're going to be in Nashua tonight at Terminus. Uh, have you made it up this way uh, previously? We have over the years. Um, not often, but over the years we have. I know. I remember um, we actually played, uh, we were in a stoner rock band called Buzzard Canyon for a while. And we played with Scissor Fight at the oh the, church? the, the Drunken Frog or something like that the something Frog. Okay, <laughs> it might have been in Manchester. I, I don't remember, but it, we, so we did that. I, I know Deadbolt's been up here a couple times, but not not very recently actually. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And uh, how did you get involved in tonight's show, of course, uh, at uh, Terminus with uh, Dank Sinatra and Dead Harrison? How, how did you get involved? We've actually played with Dead Harrison before back in Connecticut. Excellent. And um, we had been booked on the show in Vermont, so I was trying to get something to build around that. And I started talking to Eleanor, and she asked us to come play Terminus. So it worked out pretty well. So we're excited about it. It's our first time there, and um, we've heard really good things about it. So. Yeah, I was there for the uh, the open house, uh, kind of the grand opening, and I'll tell you, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'll just say this much: walking into that room, it's like you're in another world. It's it's pretty awesome. And there's a picture, actually, there's a picture of of me with uh, Andre from uh, Dead Harrison on uh, social media of us uh, standing in that room, and it's just. And I, I said in the post, I said it's like another world in here. It's uh, it's amazing. It's kind of like a magic room. You know, you'll. You'll you'll see what I mean when you get there, but uh, very very cool. Now, what's uh, are you guys headlining, or what's the order tonight? Um, actually, I don't know. So that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we we like surprises, so we'll find out when we get there. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how long you're playing? How long your set is? Um, I mean, we with the set we have now. We, I mean, we could easily do probably about an hour and fifteen. So it really depends on how long they want us to play. Right. Um. Last night, I think we did about 40, 45 minutes, something like that. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool. Now, are you guys uh, doing a lot of shows? Uh, do you have a busy uh, spring and summer ahead of you? Well, uh, we kind of got stuck behind this year because um, somebody broke their leg. Ooh. And it kind of threw things off schedule for a little bit. Yeah, way to go, broken leg guy. Yeah. Oh, so no. <laughs> we just came out of the band. <laughs> so, I, I broke my leg back in, uh, on Christmas Eve, so oh, no. we kind of set our schedule back a bit. Oh. So this is actually our first shows of the year. Oh. Um, but then uh, right now we, we've got a couple shows in Connecticut scheduled. We're going down to play Maryland Doomfest again for the third year in a row Excellent. in June. Um, so we've, we've got some stuff set up, so we're excited. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um do you have uh you must have videos on YouTube, right? Do you have uh, uh videos that you've done for for some of your music? We do. We we we've, we've done three videos so far. Okay. Um they're all up on YouTube. Um we've written and directed them and did that whole thing ourselves and um made them kind of into stories, like separate little stories because the songs are kind of long, so yeah. it just kind of made sense to make it into an epic theme, you know? Right. Not like thriller only without the contact lenses and Vincent <laughs> Price at the end. <laughs> Although, if we could get Vincent Price, I wouldn't turn that down. And yeah. When the deadbolt breaks. <laughs> oh, yeah. That in his voice that would be perfect. That would be perfect. I think he's he's been gone a while unfortunately, but uh yeah, I like that idea a lot. Um I mean Maybe some days I'll be able to resurrect him. Who knows? Yeah, you you never know with uh, technology. Um, yeah, we could have a virtual virtual Vincent Price. <laughs> well, actually, if you think about it, you could do that anyway with uh, AI technology now. I mean, uh, somebody put a whole uh, George Carlin album that wasn't actually George Carlin on YouTube, so you could probably create an AI version of Vincent Price. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, uh, the 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 possibilities could, are have endless. Pop up in the. Uh... Have, have Vincent Price's head pop up during the video, just like Slugworth. <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That'd be sweet. That would go. That would go viral. I would think. Um, yeah, I know with the Wonka team. <laughs> so I am going to play uh, as we uh, we're already approaching the uh, the end of the show, um, but uh, I am going to play this other track. I live in dirt, and. Um, but before we do that, uh, what should people know about not only, of course, the show tonight, you're going to be uh, at Terminus in Nashua tonight, but uh, what should people know, too, about where to find you online, uh, where to keep up with everything that you guys are doing? Yeah, so, um, I mean, there's, you know, we've got the band camp up. We've got a, um, a link to actually a website, uh, deadbolt doc, when the deadboltbreaks.com goes directly to our band camp page. Okay. That has all merchandise and, and records up there. Um, our most recent records were out in Argonauta Records from uh, Italy and Electric Talon, which is out of Pennsylvania. We released two in the same year because it was supposed to be a double disc. We split it up to two separate records. Mm -hmm. um, it's on. Music was too long to fit on one vinyl. Yeah, really. It, but uh, we're on all the major streaming networks and all that stuff. So, um, you know, Spotify and all that, YouTubeify and Facebook. Yeah, MySpace. 
<laughs> oh, uh, wow. Yahoo. Now, the social. We might even have a LinkedIn account somewhere. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> MySpace, wow. You know what's interesting about MySpace is you can't, uh, if you've ever been on MySpace, it's impossible to, you know, if you ever, for whatever reason, wanted to uh, remove yourself from MySpace, you really can't. They make it pretty much impossible. It's all still up there, legitimately. We yeah. have, um, I don't, I've never been there. I haven't been there in years, but yeah. we've got the MySpace and Reverb Nation, too, whatever that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little more current, but yeah, MySpace. But yeah, if you've ever had anything on MySpace, it's still there. Like, they make it impossible for you to get rid of it, so for whatever reason. But uh, no, that's that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah. good, very good, and uh, and with a name too, like when the deadbolt breaks, you're very uh, very Googleable, as I like to say. If you Google the name, you know everything comes right up, so it's easy to it's easy to find you guys. And uh, I'm That's a fan. Good. I'm a fan. I like what you're doing. It's good stuff. And um, we are uh, yeah, we're already approaching the top of the hour, but I'm glad you made it. Uh, I'm glad you made it to New Hampshire safely. I know the the weather has been uh, suboptimal, as someone said earlier in the show. So. Um, I thought we were just getting rain, and it turned out to be uh, something much more. So, <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> but did did you all did you all come up in one vehicle? No, no we, we split up. Look, we we split up because it just made it easier at the time. So yeah, uh, too much gear. Yeah, a lot of gear, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. But we do. We appreciate you having us on the show, and you know, we're sorry we couldn't make it into the studio, but we do appreciate it. Yeah, that that's okay. Absolutely. Like I said, like I said, the weather kind of screwed us, but uh, we will uh, we'll do this again in the future, and and we'll uh, you know uh, uh, when when the weather's better, we'll uh, we'll have you on, and we'll have you come up, and and uh, we'll uh, we'll sit down in the studio, and, and we'll have more time, and that'll be great. But uh, but I do appreciate you calling in, and you know, we had to kind of improvise on the fly, but that's cool. Have a great show tonight. Uh, like I said, I, I love what you guys are doing and, uh, we'll let you go. I'm going to hit this track as we wrap up. I live in dirt, but, uh, when the deadbolt breaks, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. All right. You got it. All right. Take care. Be safe. Yep. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. That was, uh, when the deadbolt breaks calling in and, uh, yeah, we'll have them back in, in, in the future in studio. Uh, the original plan was they were going to be here for the third hour, but like I said, uh, the, the weather is rough. Although looking outside, uh, it looks like uh, they've done a really good job. They, they do a pretty good job here in Manchester with uh, getting the roads clear and whatnot. So hopefully when I leave here, the uh, roads will be in significantly better uh, condition. But uh, thank you, everybody who participated today. Of course, uh, DJ Reckless, who joined me, uh, he had to take off, but uh, he was here for most of the show today. Love that track. I'm going to listen to that. I told him that song. I'm going to wait of the world that he did with, um, who else is on it with him? Sean White. And uh, I forget the who's singing on it, but I told him, I'm going to listen to that. As soon as the show's over, I'm going to listen to it again, just with the headphones on turned way up because that is really, really good. And you'll hear it again in the future. Um, and of course, uh, thank you again to Andrew North and the Rangers. Uh, also the Jade trio. And of course, Eric Pilcher for another great uh, classic film review. And, uh, Dr. Bethany Billadu uh, for joining us in the first hour. And she's someone we definitely have to have back too, because that was, uh, I thought that was a fascinating conversation. So I look forward to having her in studio sometime and meeting her. And if you missed any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at Matt, uh, at uh, WMNHradio.org and at MattConnerton.com. And uh, that's going to do it for us. Uh, I will leave you with this. It's a long song. We're not going to have time for the whole thing, but I'll leave you with this. This is I Live in Dirt. This is from When the Deadbolt Breaks. To wrap up today is Matt Connerton Unleashed. We'll talk to y'all a little bit later, and if you're traveling, be safe out there. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.